Hey, this is Nathan Crane. I'm Derek Crane. We're the co-founders of Crane Factor and the hosts of the Activating Greatness podcast. Now, mm -hmm. Activating Greatness is about living with greatness every single day, mm -hmm. understanding yourself and being true to who you are, mm -hmm. and creating greatness in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about what does greatness mean to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, throughout this episode, we're going to talk about some various definitions of it. We're going to talk about some qualities of greatness, what that looks like and what that means to you. We're going to talk about our own personal experiences and our own personal definitions of greatness. And we're going to challenge you to share with us some of the things that you believe make you great and create greatness. And we're going to share with you some quotes and ideas from who we consider some really great people who've done some amazing things on what they believe greatness is. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I want to start first with just a basic Webster definition of what greatness is. And let's look at the root word of greatness and look at the definition of the word great, right? Which in Webster it says remarkable in magnitude, degree, or effectiveness. Another possible definition in Webster is markedly superior in character or quality, especially noble. Mm. Or another definition is remarkably skilled, mm. right? So looking at that definition, looking at the word great, let's go back a little bit. Remarkable in magnitude, degree, or effectiveness. What does mm -hmm. that mean? You know, it means being really effective at what you do, mm -hmm. being really uh, great in magnitude or in degree, in the quality of mm -hmm. what you do. Right, markedly superior in character or quality, especially noble. Noble is one of those characteristics that you know is something that many of us strive towards, mm -hmm. right? Which is about integrity. It's about honesty. It's about you know caring and leadership mm -hmm. and all these different things. Being noble. So you know, defining greatness as being noble, I think, is is a really you know incredible thing that we could do. Also remarkably skilled, right? There's another mm. potential definition, like you're really, really good at what you do, mm. right? Someone could say, man, he's got greatness or she's got greatness or you're really great. Why? Because you've really honed your craft to the point where you are remarkably skilled. Mm. Yeah, what I love about greatness is, is that it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So whether that be if you want to be one of the greatest painters or if someone just wants to be one of the best teachers within uh, a school, how to get to those points. When, when I think of greatness from my own perspective, first thought that comes up is being deeply passionate, like to a point where I would consider it a healthy obsession. And even from a personal example, it would be from an NFL football camp that I went to. And this was my junior year of high school going into my senior year. And I already went into this camp with the mental mindset that I was going to go 110%. I was going to give it my all. I was going to lay everything out there. And it, it got to the point where even walking from practice to cafeteria to eat, I'd grab a leaf and go into a, a mantra or even a meditation and create stillness from there. I'd, I'd go, I'd do so many sprints and go so hard that my calves would cramp, cramp to the point to when I got done, I'd have to see a masseuse just to be able to walk and she would wrap um, ice packs around my calves and then I'd walk to the dorms. And at night, it was typical that the other people in the same dorm would go out every single night. And it was a seven day camp, three a days. Uh, and they asked me every single night if I wanted to go out, and I, I didn't. I stayed back, and I stretched. I stretched out my calves. I did my own massaging, waking up in the morning, um, being 30 minutes early to the practice session just because I knew that I was going to have to warm up before the warm-up because of the level that I was going at. And then at the end of camp, um, my name was called for, to receive the MVP award from an NFL football player. And this was the, I've been to a whole multitude of different camps and this was the first camp where, you know, the, the end result, I wasn't, I wasn't attached to getting the MVP award, but everything that I did was in presence and creating 
going 110% within that present moment where there's that healthy obsession, you know, like grabbing that leaf, going through a meditation, even on the way to a cafeteria, just creating that stillness so that the next moment that came, I'd be in that present moment 110%. And, you know, there's, there's this Michael Jordan quote that, you know, some people want it to happen, some wish it to happen, and others make it happen. So there's that, that action behind that drive and that passion. And that was like the first taste of feeling what it took to create greatness. Right. And the things I'm taking away from that is you were super disciplined, yeah. right? And yeah. fully committed. Yeah. And as you said, practicing being present in every moment, mm -hmm. right? And not focusing constantly on the end result, yeah. but focusing on the habits, the discipline and the consistency in the mo of every single moment that eventually leads you to that mm -hmm. outcome, mm -hmm. right? And too many people often are just dreaming of this great goal, yeah. but then they're waking up late, they're you know, not putting in the hours they need mm -hmm. to, they're not taking the, the, the right uh, nutrition or eating mm -hmm. the right food, they're not taking enough classes, they're not educating themselves, they're not doing the things, creating the habits, following the steps that are gonna get them to that goal, mm -hmm. right? And so, I like what you said, you know, greatness to you means passion, following your passion. I have a similar kind of uh, definition in my, my definition of greatness. Following your passion with relentless determination, while making a positive impact in other people's lives mm. and growing mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually every single day while being impeccable with your word. Mm. And so that similarity is like following your passion, right? Mm. You're passionate about football at the time, mm. right? Uh, while making a positive impact in other people's lives, mm. right? So sharing the, that story, sharing that goal, sharing your energy, mm. you know, that sort of thing uh, with other people. Um, and growing mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually every day. Like to me, that's, that's greatness. Like mm -hmm. if you are working on yourself consistently mm -hmm. and you're getting better as a human being in all these different areas, then you are embodying a level of greatness in your life. Mm -hmm. If you're staying the same and you're continuing the same, you know, bad habits and bad patterns and you're continuing to do the same old things, well, guess what? That's not embodying greatness, activating mm -hmm. greatness in your life. And what we want to share with you everyone listening is you know you can activate that greatness within you there's mm -hmm. greatness within every single person mm -hmm. and that's what the, this show is all about is learning how to activate that within mm -hmm. yourself um, and then finally in my definition being impeccable with your word we've talked a lot about this mm -hmm. don miguel ruiz uh, mm -hmm. this is where um, you know i love how he talks about it in the four agreements mm -hmm. but to me being impeccable with your word means like if i say something i'm going to do it Mm -hmm. If I have a goal, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm going to be somewhere at a certain time, like I have a meeting with somebody, I'm going to be there at that time. Mm -hmm. If I say, you know what, this is what I want to do. This is the father I want to be. This is the mm -hmm. husband or wife or whatever it is that, that you want to do, that you create the habits, the discipline, and the actions to actually achieve that. Mm -hmm. right? And to me, that's greatness. Whether you're you know, the highest paid NFL football player or you're, mm -hmm you know, a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad or somebody who's working a nine-to-five job, but you are embodying greatness in these other areas of your life. It's not about fame and fortune and all that that makes you great. You know, it's about the discipline and the habits and the actions that get you there. It's like, I love listening to Kobe Bryant, you know, mm -hmm. even though he's, uh, his personality is, you know, really rough and rugged and, and very competitive at another level, you know, he did whatever it took to achieve his goals. His goals, he wanted to be the greatest basketball player. And I think, you know, you could really compare him and Michael Jordan as the greatest basketball players that have ever lived so far. You know, mm -hmm. LeBron James is up there. Mm -hmm. And if you follow the things that they talk about and what they say, you know, they wake up before anybody else. Mm -hmm. They put in more time, more hours, more work, more dedication, more commitment. They're tired. They don't want to go to practice. They do it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's going out partying like you, like, you know, at the football camp. And, mm -hmm. you know, they go to bed at 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night, 9.30 at night, because they know they got to get up early and do what they need to do. And back to the beginning of my definition of greatness, you know, to have that kind of commitment to something, you need to know what your passion is. Yeah what you're passionate about, what you love, what, you know, lights you up. And so you have to find what that is and know what that is and then follow it. 
a lot of people know what their passion is, but they're yeah. too afraid or not committed or don't think that they could achieve whatever that is or think it's not going to make them money or whatever, so they don't follow it. But the mm -hmm. number one part of my definition of greatness is follow your passion with relentless determination. Mm -hmm. Know what it is and don't ever give up on it. Because then you'll have more commitment and more dedication to it and you'll have a lot more fun doing it. I love how you just said, don't give up on it. Like how, how potent and powerful is that statement? Like right, as a personal trainer, see, see people like they come in really highly motivated. I've seen it count, countless times. They'll come in and say, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. That's great. It's great to, to have the want. And um, some of them suddenly think like, like a magic pill kind of status. They don't see results in seven days. So then they get a little discouraged. And it's like, yeah, think of this as not just one little goal that you're going to achieve within three months, but an entire lifestyle that you're going to embody. Like you suddenly become your own coach in a sense where you're reading these self-growth books and starting to learn how to meditate. The other thing that I love that you touched on was you're covering all these areas of life, you know, the, the meditation, the mental, the emotional, and bringing it into your life in a multitude of different ways so that if discouragement does happen in, in any one area, you have a spark of inspiration and motivation. I think that that's where, you know, you have the greats like LeBron James and Michael Jordan and, you know, that UFC fighter, Conor McGregor, like these people have a sense of what inspires inspires them and motivates them so that even on the days where they they don't feel 110% they they can go into a journal and they can start writing positive affirmations or suddenly they they know of something that they can watch that'll suddenly spark that and ignite it like a little uh, what I think of is like flint you know like flint where you can create at least that spark and suddenly you have a drive you know it might not feel 110% in not maybe not want to go to the gym, but suddenly that spark of the end goal comes into mind and, or you watch a video of someone achieving something amazing and, and that's what creates a drive or greatness. That's what I love about this whole entire concept of greatness is that for every single one person, it can mean something completely different, but the, there's fundamentals that create greatness in all areas of life. Absolutely, I mean, even look at some of the great, you know, spiritual leaders of mm -hmm. our time, you know, that have changed entire nations or mm -hmm. changed entire paradigms of thinking and consciousness and mm -hmm. ways of being, you know, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. right, is a great example. Um, Gandhi, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, incredible example. Um, Mother Teresa, mm -hmm. you know, people who, are embodying in, in greatness in their lives is uh, about having incredible compassion mm. and love and understanding for people. Mm. And through that love, through that same thing, that passion, right? Mm. The passion of caring about people, following their passion mm. and following it relentlessly with mm. determination, right? No matter what's going on, people are getting mm. lynched, people are getting killed, they're, mm. you know, living on the streets in complete mm. poverty, like Mother Teresa, right? She was literally living with people in the streets with just, you know, little bits of bread every day and things like that. But yeah. that passion drove them through those incredibly challenging times and helped lift it up entire civilizations yeah. through the work they were doing. And that's like a mega level of greatness. Yeah. And I don't think any one of them really got into the work that they did. Like, I want to be known as the most mm -hmm. compassionate, greatest person in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I doubt that's where that came from, but that just that dedication to that love and commitment to their passion of really wanting to help people, mm -hmm. that's what rose them to greatness. Now, you don't have to become a Gandhi or a mm -hmm. Mother Teresa. It doesn't mean that you don't have greatness if you're not at that kind of renowned level. Mm -hmm. You know, as we said, the key here is finding ways to activate greatness in every area of your life mm -hmm. by embodying the right kind of disciplines and habits, thinking and actions. Mm -hmm. You know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, you know, mm -hmm. someone who, uh, you know, started off in uh, football and his big dream was to be an NFL player, mm -hmm. right? And he didn't make it, you know, and it was like, uh, what was he going to do? Like his life could have been crushed. He could have said my life's over, whatever. So he decided to get into wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. 
And he says wrestling was one of the greatest decisions of his life. And he learned so much. And what it taught him was about being true to himself. Mm. It's one of the biggest things he learned in his early stages of wrestling and gaining that fame. You know, his, uh, I was listening to his story the other day and he talked about, you know, how all of a sudden, you know, there's 20,000 people in the crowd booing him mm. because they felt he was not authentic to himself. Mm. And, and that like destroyed him for a while. And when he came back, he recognized, he learned from that, I need to be authentic to who I truly am. And that's what this podcast is about, is activating that within yourself, right? Greatness is about understanding who you are and then being true to who you are. And guess what? Not only did he become incredibly great in wrestling, mm -hmm. but then he became, and still is, incredibly great in movies, in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of the greatest actors of all time right now, one of the highest paid actors of all time, doing mm -hmm. what he loves. But he also does other work, and he's also a comedian, and he, you know, he's being true to who he is and following mm -hmm. his passions and embodying greatness. And one of the quotes that he says is, success isn't always about greatness. It's about consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistent hard work leads to success. Greatness will come. Mm -hmm. So that's the key. Like, yeah, you have your goal, but it's not always just about Oh, if I'm successful, I'm great. It's about being consistent and working hard every single day, mm -hmm. which will lead you to the success. And through that path, greatness will come as a result of it. Mm -hmm. uh, another quote from William Shakespeare. He said, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Mm -hmm. Right? And, you know, that's another way to think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody who, let's say, was born great mm -hmm. is going to probably have more challenges dealing with that than mm -hmm. somebody who, let's say, achieves greatness, mm -hmm. right? Um, because if you're born like, let's say, you're a savant or you're a, just an incredible pianist or an incredible artist or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, or like you look at these young football players that come up out of high school, you know, and get thrown into, you know, uh, Division One college and all of a sudden they have all this publicity and mm -hmm. all this you know, all these rewards coming at them. Everybody wants to be with them. They want all these interviews. It's like, and they don't know how to deal with it. And they either drop out of school, stop following their passion, or turn to drugs, or turn to violence, end up in jail. This is happening all over the place in all kinds of professions, right? Mm -hmm. So having, you know, and then another version of that is having greatness thrust upon you, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so however you're experiencing greatness, it still comes down to mm -hmm. understanding yourself and being true to who you are. Mm -hmm. Because however you're experiencing greatness, if you know that about yourself, then you'll always be able to get through those challenging times. Yeah, I really like how on that quote of Shakespeare, having greatness thrust upon you, what that instantly makes me think of is that greatness favors the prepared. So if you put like that, if, if greatness is thrusted upon you, it's like, here's your opportunity. What are you going to do with it? You're gonna board, you know, board that train to suddenly feel that fulfillment of excellence and greatness in your whole life because you've done all these little stepping stones. You know, you've done all these meditations, you've done all these readings, you've done all the practices, the practices, the fundamentals. You know, I think of guitar, the fundamentals of guitar, going through scales, all that, all that little work that then suddenly you see, you know, the Beethoven or these huge great great artists, but on a daily basis, they do the fundamentals. Right, exactly. Yeah, and it, you know, as we come close to kind of wrapping up here, you know, through one of my experiences of experiencing greatness, which I didn't think it was at the time, but I look back and it's like, this is uh, an experience of greatness, mm -hmm. is, you know, growing up uh, in Montana, ended up being homeless and on the streets at 15, addicted mm -hmm. to drugs and alcohol, uh, you know, thinking I wasn't going to make it past 18, in and out of jail, house mm -hmm. arrest, um, you know, getting into dealing drugs and mm -hmm. running from the police and fighting all the time, street fights constantly and on a really bad path, right? Mm -hmm. I became really great at that kind of lifestyle. Uh -huh. That was a form of, let's say, greatness in that lifestyle uh, in the opposite, in the negative way, yeah. right? Yeah, you can become really great at something that's really bad. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're doing the habits of that thing that make you really good at that really bad thing. Mm -hmm. Like really good at eating really bad. Yeah. You know, really good at being a very negative person. Mm -hmm. 
right? So habits towards the negative or towards the positive are going to give you that same vibration of, of greatness, right? And in greatness, in this case, obviously, we're talking about it from the positive connotation. And, you know, the change I made when I was 18 was I, I just had this awakening, this epiphany and said, I need to change. I need to leave all this behind. So I packed a suitcase uh, with the best friend of mine at the time in my Cadillac, drove down to California, mm -hmm. left everything behind, got sober and completely started my life over. Mm -hmm. And that was over like 13 years ago mm -hmm. now. And just that act of recognizing, wow, I'm on a really bad path mm -hmm. and it's either death or prison for me. And I have all these friends, I have this life, I have mm -hmm. all these things I'm attached to and I don't know this other world over here. I don't know mm -hmm. this world of goodness, of health, of, mm -hmm. of positivity. Of, I just didn't have those role models. Uh, some came into my life which actually helped inspire me, but I was surrounding myself with people who we were all on this very negative path together. But just that awareness of recognizing I need a change and then actually doing it, mm -hmm. actually making the change, leaving everything behind, starting mm -hmm. completely over on the streets, you know, making a few dollars a day playing guitar just to mm -hmm. eat bread and lettuce sandwiches. But to me, like, it was one of the greatest periods mm -hmm. of my life. You know, I've had many since then, but certainly one of the greatest because I knew that like, wow, I could actually do something. What? I don't know. No idea. But I know that I can start on a positive path. And that's what you need is to have some hope and know that you can do better than what you're doing now at whatever you're doing, however small or big. But implementing those habits, these daily disciplines will lead you towards more greatness in your life. And... You know, that's what we're here to do is to help inspire and instill that within you. And that reminds me of a quote from Les Brown where he says, Most people fell in life not because they aim too high and miss, but because they aim too low and hit. So one constant reminder about achieving this greatness is setting goals. That's what, that's what I think about. I'll, I'll open up my journal and I'll just set down goals, whether that be for that day, for that month, for that week, for the whole year, for the five years ahead, but to continuously set goals, whether you achieve them in that day or not, continuously setting goals and reach for the most pinnacle point that you can possibly hit of it. And then even think higher than that. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to look at it. So as we end today's episode and every episode, we have a weekly greatness challenge we want to encourage you to participate in. This all happens over at our Facebook page. So two things. First is we want you to think of something you've done in the past year yeah. that you could define as being great. So recognize what's something you've done. One thing, you've probably done a lot of things, but let's think of, you can write it down, one thing you've done in the past year that you would define as being great or having a level of greatness. And then the second thing, think about what area of your life you could spend more time creating greatness in. So what is it? Finances, relationship, uh, your schoolwork, your studying, your athletics, your training. What is it? Any area in your life. Think mm -hmm. of one area that you can spend more time activating greatness in. Then head over to our Facebook page at Crane Factor. So look up Crane Factor on Facebook and look for the post there that talks about today's weekly challenge. Uh, and this episode, it'll be titled, What Does Greatness Mean to You? Right? And post that below. Why? Because then we as a community can help support each other and hold each other accountable. We'll be there to help post and ask questions and inspire, and you can be there to do that for others as well, because greatness is only greatness when you have a community of people that are supporting each other to higher levels of greatness. So thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. You can join our newsletter with inspiring videos that go out weekly at cranefactor.com. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care. Thank you. And remember to live with greatness every single day.